to The Writer's Dream. This is a show where authors can talk about how they wrote their books, how they publish their books, and how they market their books. It's also a place where people can find out how a story becomes a book. My name is Linda Frank. I am the author of Annie Tillery Mysteries, and our guest today is Marilyn Levinson. And Marilyn Levinson is a jack of all trades. Marilyn has written children's books, she has written mysteries, and romantic suspense. Which came first, the children's books or the mysteries? Well, actually, uh, the romantics, I wrote a romantic sp suspense first. And I'm going to be putting that one out soon. So that they haven't been published in any order. I wrote, I was published first as a children's book author. It's back in 86, was, uh, 87 was my first book. And Don't Bring Jeremy. I think that children's books um, probably are easier to get published because there seems to be a voracious appetite for them. I don't know. It's, yeah. It can be very difficult to get them published as well. I think that's why I started writing romantic suspense and mysteries. Yes, well, that's another genre that's popular too. What is a romantic suspense? Oh. Well, they have all sorts of rules for it. The first time I wrote a romantic suspense, I didn't know there were rules. But what it is is that there is a, they call them heroes and heroines in romance. And um, the hero, the romance is a very important part of the story. And according to one interpretation, they're supposed to, or one definition, they're, they're supposed to keep the hero and the heroine together, which is often difficult. And that's what, and that's what makes a romantic suspense. Um, my sus romantic suspenses have love stories and their murders as well, which most romantic suspenses are. So in other words, you could have the hero and the heroine meet because of the murder. Right. You could have them as characters in the murder story. Um, They're very involved in the murder story. I mean, she can be suspecting him of being the murderer or something like that. Or he could be who he is. Who he is he could be somebody who uh, she is not as he, the person he claims to be. So yes, because I could see making a whole series of like a husband and wife yeah. or a, a couple who yeah. just go around solving murders. I know, but that really wouldn't be a romantic suspense because the, in the romantic suspense, they usually end up, they end up together at the end. Okay, well, so, so they aren't together in the beginning. They, right, the so you wouldn't. Right. story is part of the plot. Right, so you wouldn't have Macmillan and Wife yeah. because Yeah, they, Macmillan and Wife, right. I was thinking of yeah. that. I loved that show. I did too, <laughs> and, and Mr. and Mrs. North. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So I think, I think we do like that, which hmm, gives me an idea for a new yeah, series. Yeah, see, yeah, those <laughs> ideas are generated. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking in terms of how your characters drive the plot. So here the plot kind of drives the characters together? Well, they have to solve... A, I guess in any murder mystery, there's a murder, and they have to solve the, the mystery, right? Okay. So there's I, that. I was curious about that. Um, tell us about your books. These are the ones who, that are yeah. published. Well, I have others that are published. Um, actually, these are uh, Rufus and Magic Run Amok is a book that was one of my children's books that I put back in print. It was a, uh, a children's choice, a, an International Reading Association Children's Book Council children's choice, and it went out of print, and so I did what many authors are doing now. Um, I had the rights back. I had someone do a cover. I, ha I had my interpret. I told her what I wanted. I was very much involved with the, cur with the cover. I updated it, and I, I put it up. I also did this book with my, I did this with No Boys Allowed, which was a children's book of mine that was out for 18 years and um, updated it and had, had a cover done for it. And this is the first one that you published? Um, no, it's And Don't Bring Jeremy. That was the and first book I, I ever had. I like yeah. your titles, No Boys Allowed. Tell me about that. You have to tell me about No Boys Allowed. Oh, <laughs> no, no Boys Allowed is about a girl who she's thrown into the situation that her father is leaving them. And she, um, she, she gets very angry at him. He's, he, he's a lawyer, and he uh, divorces um, her mother, who's kind of scatterbrained. And um, he, he goes to another state to live you know, with his new wife. And Cassie decides that 
She will have nothing to do with any boys, any men, and that includes her best friend, Bobby. And um, nobody knows it, but she did save one thing of her father's, and that was a stamp album, and she secretly begins to collect stamps. And then her father's uncle, who is her great uncle, comes to live with them, and she's forced to get, he's, he's recuperating from a heart attack, and he's, um, she's forced to give up her room and move in with her sister, Corinne, and um, her uncle discovers the, um, that, that she, the, the stamp album, and, which actually he had given to her father, and he starts to help her. And slowly but surely, she comes to not hate men as she had, and is even going, is willing to speak to her father. I also explore how the three women in the house uh, react to the divorce. Her mother gets more serious and gets a job, not a very traditional job. And um, then her, her sister, Corinne, who's very pretty, has a marvelous boyfriend, but she keeps testing him. And when he breaks up with her on Valentine's Day, she sort of has a nervous breakdown. So they all have different reactions, but they all come out of it all right. Yeah, I, I, I try to do the same thing in my books where I bring in the problems that um, seem to, I'm sure those problems always existed, but uh, in the old days we didn't talk about those problems. Now we try to bring them out and, and uh, show children that uh, many people experience the same yeah. problems and there are solutions and there are choices. And I right, think that's, and that's what it was. She had a choice, you know, and, um, <laughs> But she tries to, to pull the same thing when her uncle's about to move back to his home and she feels betrayed again. And then he explains to her, I'm not leaving you, Cassie. I'm, I was only coming for a short time. You can always visit me. And she begins to see that everything's not black and white. And, and most important lesson for all of us, yeah. that everything's not black right. and white. Life has to go on. It's different, but it has to go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. and it is an important lesson. Okay, mysteries. Mm, yes. What is it about mysteries? That we all love? Yes, what is it? Because <laughs> I write mysteries too. I, 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 I once wrote a, a guest blog about that, why we're so really? drawn to mysteries. I think I looked at some of the reasons, but first of all, I, we just, we love puzzles. You mm -hmm. know, how many puzzles? I do Sudoku all day, we all do puzzles. Mm. And there, it's, there's the solving mystery puzzle who did it, et cetera. And writing them is even more fun in a way because you can change your, your victim, you could change your, you know, your You murderer. design the puzzle. Exactly. And um, which, you know, takes a lot of thinking. But also, the, first of all, there's the satisfaction at the end, I think, that usually the murder, murderer is caught. And, and even if the murderer is, it gets away with it, um, it, there's a reason why the, the author has allowed the murderer to get to escape. And, um, and, and there's, there's always closure in a mystery. I think we like that. And also, I think the fact of murder titillates us. We don't want to be involved in any murder, in any murder, but I think we enjoy reading about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, seeing that the murderer gets his comeuppance. In the end. It's true. I, I was at a conference about um, media, and news was described as something out of the ordinary. And I think that a mystery book is always something out of the ordinary. There's always some shocking crime, and yes. especially murder. And, uh, and I think that um, you also bring in the whole concept of your, your, your mortality. And you're always investigating. I think all of us are always investigating our mortality. Yes. You know, we're always thinking about um, when someone dies, it's a shocking event, uh, even though we know it's going to happen, but we investigate it. And, uh, and, I, and I certainly agree with you that you like to bring the murderer to justice. Yes, <laughs> I, I think so. And, and one other aspect of mysteries that I like, that, and I always incorporate, and I always see this usually, is that we all have secrets. And um, you always find out what's, what's behind the facade of so many of the characters. And they may be hiding something, and the detective has to determine whether it's relevant to the, you know, the case or if it isn't. But um, that's always fascinating, too, to see 
you know, what lurks behind their facades. Right, and I, I hearken back to the O.J. Simpson case where there, in, in the minds of many, many people, there was no justice done. Absolutely. And so look at the number of books that were written about that case, and mm. uh, including by O.J. Simpson, mm. uh, if I did it. If, yes, <laughs> if, if I did it. Right. <laughs> and... Um, I mean, certainly he was exonerated of the crime, but or he was not found guilty, I should say. But right. uh, but the fascination with uh, the idea of uh, even just committing mm. a crime, I think right. it's, there's a little bit of bloodlust in there. I know. Uh, so. And and then there's that Agatha Christie, the, the the novel that she had written, you know, Murder on, on the, the Orient. Orient. That's my favorite. And what is that? That's yeah. her getting back at the, you know, they're getting revenge for the Lindbergh baby kidnapping and That's death. right. You know, right. I, when I taught forensic science, I taught the Lindbergh case because the Lindbergh case mm. was, uh, it still is controversial. Yeah. You, do you think he did it? The, no. No, I don't either. No. I don't either. The, the evidence was not, not compelling. Exactly. Um, I, he may have been involved in it, mm. but I don't really think he committed the murder. And, yeah. Um, but I, I showed it. I mean, I taught that case in forensic science, and then I would show Murder on the Orient Express just to show how she took that case yes. and, and how she meted out justice. Right, yes. Because she, she felt the need to meet it out. And, it's, um, and, and of course, Poirot lets the murderers go free because justice has been served. And I often think of, <laughs> I love Jack Reacher, and I, I know that Lee Child's books, I w you would not think that women like those books, but so many women do. And if you add it, I, I've never added up all the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yet, who does he kill? He kills people who deserve it. Mm -hmm. So there is that sense of justice we have. Yes, and that is another aspect of, of a loving mystery. So tell me about your mysteries. Well, these, these two mysteries um, are, are related. They're in the, they're in the Twin Lakes um, mystery um, series. A Murderer Among Us is the first, and Murder in the Air is the second. A Murderer Among Us oh, was a best indie chosen a, a, of what, 2011 by Suspense Magazine. I saw that in your uh, website. Yeah, and um, they take place in an upscale, over 55 gated community. Um, Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, actually, this, I took, in Murder in the Air, I, those, she used the, my um, illustrator, the, you know, the, the person who did the cover, she used my, pic, my photographs. Actually, that's, she used some, two photographs of Very where nice. I live, actually. But I don't, I don't live in an over 55 upscale community, but it, there are, Similarities, but nobody's been murdered there ever. Thank God. Yes. In um, A Murder Among Us, um, we, meet, we meet Lydia Krause. She's, uh, she's over, well, she's 48, or she's 58. I can't remember now. I think she's 58. She's newly retired. She's newly widowed. And um, she comes to live here because her daughter um, suggests that she live near her. And her daughter um, really is looking for a babysitter, which Lydia isn't prepared to really be. Um, and what happens is that Lydia goes into, with her neighbor, to go, goes into the bingo, which is really not something she would play ordinarily. And she sees this man, and she's introduced to this man, and she knows who this man is. It's the same man who she feels her sister committed suicide over, he's changed his name, and um, he was in jail for embezzlement. And so she confronts him quite openly, which is not something she usually does. And the next morning, the man's wife, who has just started fighting with Lydia like a wildcat, um, is found dead, mowed down by Lydia's car. So of course, the detective thinks that Lydia did it, of course, why not? But Lydia, when she ran out of the bingo room after having the uh, altercation with the wife, with, um, with Claire, um, she, run, she runs into the ladies' room, and there she meets this woman she knows very, you know, doesn't know, she doesn't know anyone well there, Barbara, 
and Barbara's very sick with a stomach virus, and she goes home and takes care of Barbara, and she stays here overnight. Well, then, you know, she starts to investigate, the, the, to protect herself, really, and, uh, and she starts to find out who murdered, you know, who murdered Claire. And um, she becomes friendly with some women, and there is this relationship she has with, um, with, with um, Saul Molina, the detective on the case. And then, oddly enough, um, the man she's accused of asks, he's, he's, there's another death, and he's considered the, murder, the murderer, and um, he asks Lydia to help him, and she kind of feels guilty, so she does. And meanwhile, she has issues with her, her grown daughters. Her daughter, who's constantly asking her to babysit, um, is, is never home. She seems very unhappy. She's resented Lydia because Lydia went to work when she was young. Uh, and um, she, Lydia took over her husband's business because her husband was a sculptor, and he, she took over the family business. She was very successful at it. And Lydia beginning to wonder about her daughter's strange changes of mood. Mm -hmm. And she, one day, she drives, she has to drive back to um, Twin Lakes, where she lives, and she has her granddaughters in the car, and she sees her daughter's car at the, um, somebody's home. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she finds out that her daughter's having an affair. Mm. And then the other daughter, who's a very free spirit, is getting married and um, going to live in England. So, and, and Lydia's a little hurt that they're having the wedding at his, his, um, his relative's house. So basically, um, and I think this is important, this is an important point for anyone who's thinking about writing, is with a mystery, you can't just talk about the mystery. The book becomes very leaden and very un... Uh, you can't relate to it unless you have characters yes, who yes. have emotional problems. Now, does Lydia show up here? Oh, yes. So yes. you have a signature character. Oh, oh yes. Lydia is... Um, she's on this committee for this new renovations. They, they bought some land right behind the Twin Lakes property. And um, they're ex excavating the land, and uh, they had to raise this house that was there. And they, they find um, the remains of a body. And Saul Molina comes on the scene. Now, Lydia. And he is also a signature character because yes, he was the detective in yes. the other. Now, Lydia, she, le she leaves. She doesn't really want to see Saul because they did have one date, and then he never called again. So she's not really mm. very happy. <laughs> so, however, he comes to her house, and they do have a discussion. And then somebody in where she lives is, um, is, is murdered, and um, he has a connection to the body that was, that was put in this house. Um, 65 years ago. So there's always enough enough little teasers in yeah. those first few chapters to connect the right people to the right thing so that you want to find out right. what's going to happen. Now, um, you self-published? Okay. This book I put out with a small e-press. Okay. I just was not happy about certain elements of it. Mm -hmm. So I took back the second book, and I, I did publish this myself. Okay. And that was quite an experience. Yes, because you had to go to a graphic designer and have them right. set it up. And so, but I had already put up, I'm trying to remember now, I think I, I don't remember if I had put up my two children's books first or I put Murder in the Air up first. Um, but yes, I had to get a cover. I had to, um, I put it up on, um, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And um, in ebook format or both? In ebook format, yes, and in and, and, in and both cre with Create Space. Right. And um, how did you like Create Space? Well, I've only done it with two books so far. Create Space. Um, I found it very, very difficult to get it to get it formatted the way you correctly. Wanted I it. had to go to my library, yeah. and the person in charge of you know the the. You know, computer. He he spent an hour and a half with me to to get it, and I had done some of it, so I I found it difficult. 
um, very easy to put up as an ebook. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And um, I, I just a child can do that. And then I found that um, you know I, I would have um, you know I'm I did a lot of guest guest blogging and this and that, but I felt that it really wasn't wasn't getting very far. And then um, I just I decided to go with the Kindle Select, and you know every day we learn something new. That's my experience. Yes. It's self publishing. Yes. I don't know what works and what doesn't work. I know what I gravitate to. So um, by the I, um, I, I put up No Boys Allowed about a month ago, mm -hmm. and I knew which sites to advertise it on free advertising. And I so I, I gave away like twenty to forty seven something like that, which is a lot for children's books. Then two weeks ago, I did it with Murder in the Air, and I have a friend who's. She said oh, I wouldn't give my book. This away. is advertising where um, different websites. Oh, the ones I, I sent to yes, you. Yes, the different the right. different sites that say free books. There's many many sites that give away free okay. e-books. Well, that's what Kindle Select does too, pretty right. much. So they loan I, them. I put this up for three days, and I, I notified everyone I knew. Um, and, and we writers do download each other's books. Mm -hmm. We, we oh, sure. do that. But I, I put it up on these sites, and um, I, the, first, the first day was only, I don't know, 2,000. But by the end of the third day, and then there were a few more, totally, they, they straggled in. 12,431 people had downloaded my book. Now, I know that doesn't mean that everyone's going to read no, it. No, I know, but they're but, hits. Yeah, but, um, but people have bought it since. And I, 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 I will add also that I have really excellent reviews. I have a lot of... That's, that's important. Yes. I yeah, mean, when I get a review, it's yes. good too. But um, I've also heard that there is a kind of bullying that goes on amongst yeah. authors of the same genre. Yeah. They don't want people, they'll write a really bad yeah. review for your book because they I, don't I've want I've heard of that. Yeah. I, I I've never experienced no, it. I haven't either, but like the, one, of the, one of the reviewers, you know, she, she wrote that Marilyn Levinson is my favorite mystery there you author, go. author, bar there you none. Go. Well, Hands down, she's one of these down. days I'm going to do a show just on this, uh, you know, advertising on the yeah. net, but I really want to get to Sisters in Crime. Yeah. Tell me about Sisters in okay. Crime. Okay, well, um, I belong to uh, various writing groups. Mm -hmm, um, me too. Um, I've been a member of the Long Island, uh, RWA, Long Island Romance, Romance Writers, Writers, for many, many years. That's where I met you. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's very funny because I never think of myself as a romance writer, although I do have a short story out that's a romance, and, and now Dangerous Relations is coming out in October. But I am a, I'm basically, I think of myself as a mystery writer. Mm -hmm. and, but I've learned so much through them. And, and, and this enabled, I'll, which I will tell you in a moment, to do what I did. Um, a few years ago, I went to my first Malice Domestic um, conference, and um, you know I got to see meet people I had spoken to very, at various times. You know, I mean, people I, I was connected to e-book, mm -hmm. e e, through, um, through email. And I, I decided I was going to start a chapter on Long Island uh, because I, I knew I wasn't, I just don't run into Manhattan, you know, for me. And it's called SYNC, right? It's Sisters, Sisters in, in Crime. Right, capital S, small I-N, capital C. So I came home. And I got my friend Bernadine Fagan. I said, "Come, co-organize co, um, this." Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we we'll have to get her on the show too. Mm -hmm. We'll have to get her on the yes. show too. Um, so we, you know, I got a list. Um, Sisters in Crime was originally founded by Sarah Peretsky. I don't know how yeah, many yeah, years okay. ago. Because, I like the books. Uh, yeah, there was the feeling, you know, that books by women mystery authors were not getting, you know, what they deserve. Mm -hmm. And now there are men who belong to Sisters in Crime. We do have some men. <laughs> so I decided, so, you know, we gathered, we gathered up the, um, you know, we, I, I wrote, a, you know, I got a list of people who, you know, who lived in the general area and emailed them. 
And um, we, you know, we called for a meeting actually two years ago in August. It was two years ago. The meeting was in my library in the Holbrook. Uh, and what Holbrook, do you do at the meetings? Because Station. I haven't been to one yet. Yeah. Well, we do a variety of things. And when I, met, when I said I was going to start this, um, Hank um, Filippi Ryan said, she, she said, Marilyn, I'll be your first guest. And she was. She came in December, and she came, she came down from Boston. And again, members um, of LIRW came. Because um, I'm a member, and I've been a member many years. And we've had joint meetings, et cetera. Some of long, like you saw, us, we had about five people from our group right, at, at right. the other, um, at the romance the, at the romance there, writers yeah. luncheon, which is a wonderful thing. Yes, um, you never know where you'll meet someone like you. <laughs> that's that's right. I, I, that's right. <laughs> um, so um, our meetings, we're very casual. Uh, we we do not have that many members. We have about ten, but people keep joining. Um, recently, um, um, we have two men in the group. And the last one who joined, John Olin, he, he's, he was um, a, uh, I forgot his complete title, but he was a homicide detective, but he had a very high ranking in Nassau County, and he wrote a book, you know. So we meet in various places, various libraries, like the one next this coming Saturday is, is in a diner. Um, we have speakers. Um, we're giving each other, you know, ha we'll, we'll, I've had, um, People come and talk. We've had publicity person. Well, from I, I cannot wait to attend mm. this this meeting next Saturday, and I think that I'm going to have to have you back on the show <laughs> because I think there's a lot to explore here. Uh, you've certainly given some very good insights into what it's like to write a mystery. And um, who's speaking at this meeting on Saturday? Anyone? Or are we just chatting? No, we're just going to talk. We're just really going to chat, you know. And well, we, we always talk about what we're working on. And um, another thing we do is problems, issues. You know, if you have a, a, a you know a plot problem, or if you have a question about what to do. Well, thank you, thank you very much oh, for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Linda. And we'll have you back again. Well, thank, thank you. you.